there, I'm Alec. And let's talk about commercials. Five Go to the general and save some Affleck. If you're a late 90s, early 2000s kid such as myself, then I know for a fact that you have watched so many goddamn commercials in your day. I mean, it was before Netflix and streaming took all the commercials from us. I mean, what were we gonna do? Not watch Kim Possible on Disney Channel? What do I look like? A loser? Don't answer that. But when I look back on those commercials nowadays, I'm actually pretty nostalgic for a good portion of them. We got some of those commercials that they did once and then they just repeated them for years. Like I'm talking about the chocolate factory, Fushigi balls, and zoo books. Fuck, I wanted zoo books so goddamn bad when I was younger. Cause I mean, there was a fucking monkey next to those kids in that commercial and I was just like, holy shit, that could be me. Did I ever get a zoo book? No, but they looked cool. Cool. But then also some of those commercials were a part of like a group of commercials and then the network would play each one of those commercials interchangeably. So think like the Capri Sun Disrespectoids or like some of the old Old Spice ads. But then there were the very few brands that decided they were going to try and tell an ongoing story with their commercials. One of the first ones of those that pop out in my mind is the Fruit Loops ads when Toucan Sam and his three nephews were trying to find Blackbeak's treasure and then it eventually eventually culminated into them making like a new Fruit Loop flavor or something or like they had like little bumps or something I don't fucking remember <laughs> editing out like what the fuck was it but in my humble opinion, no other brand's commercials told such a story as the Goldfish Cracker commercials. The snack that smiles back. Goldfish. Starting around 2005 and 2006, Pepperidge Farm started making commercials for its Goldfish Cracker snack food that featured an established cast of characters. These characters were CGI animated Goldfish Crackers, and the commercials would feature their adventures of what they would do as loose, sentient Goldfish Crackers. The main character was none other than the original mascot of Goldfish Crackers, Finn, who has been their mascot, I think, for, like, years. He was kind of, uh, I don't know, he was boring. <laughs> he was, like, the happy-go-lucky guy. He's just like, yeah, we can do it. And then as for the others, there's Brooke, who's like, I guess the girl goldfish. She's like the smart, sporty girl, you know, like if I can say this about a goldfish cracker, the girl next door type. She's the type of character that your parents would tease you about where they're like, oh, you two are going to be married in 25 years. And you're just like, shut up, mom. But then like when you hit puberty, you're like, Brooke, you're, you're looking a bit different there. And then you got Gilbert, the pretzel goldfish, who in my eyes is the worst of the group. I don't care what the people that took my poll on my community tab say. He's the worst because he's a little whiny baby. And I'm just like, shut up, Gilbert. No one likes you. At least I don't like you. Apparently five people out there do. And they're all subscribed to my channel. And then we got Extreme, the flavor blasted goldfish, who's like the cool one. He plays sports and he does all the awesome stunts. He's extreme. But then you got some other characters that show up later on, like Swimmington, who is another flavor blasted goldfish, who is actually Extreme's brother. And Coral, who's I think like a chocolate gram goldfish. I mean, she doesn't show up until like the fifth season, so who cares about her? So with this cast of characters, eventually in 2009, Goldfish Crackers started making commercials that told an ongoing story, starting with The Search for Gilbert, which I believe is the most well-known one. However, I don't want to just like talk about or react to these like group of commercials or something because like I could do that, but like they're only 30 seconds long. I'm not going to have much of substance to say about like individual commercials. So that got me thinking, how about instead of reacting to one or two of these seasons of commercials, I do something a little bit differently and look at them as a whole and dissect the lore of the Goldfish Cracker commercial universe. I want to look at what we can find out from the details from these commercials because I've watched all of them and I have a lot of questions because just by doing a little bit of research and doing a little bit of digging like I have, you start to find out some interesting tidbits. Like Finn has a full name and so does Extreme and also just where where are the people in this universe? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm here to ask, what is the lore of the Goldfish Cracker commercials? Prepare to put on your tinfoil hats because I might just be cracking the biggest conspiracy theory of the commercial world.
What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? So I want to start with arguably the biggest question that I have. How are these goldfish crackers alive? If we start with the very first commercial, it doesn't give us a lot of clues why they'd be alive. We just see Finn moving out of the bag on the nightstand to underneath the bed and meeting Brooke and Gilbert and Extreme for the first time. But the question that I kept asking myself over and over again while I was watching these commercials back for the first time was where the hell are all the people? I mean, we see instances of the vacuum being run, and also there's like laundry strewn about this room that they're living in, and even that there's like house appliances turned on like an air conditioner. So they must not be alone in this house, but I just never saw any people in these commercials. Meanwhile, there were living, breathing goldfish crackers inside this house, and these goldfish crackers could do more than just breathe. They could also move by floating in the air, and they could also hold things. Most of the time, they did that with their mouths, or with like, I guess the fins that they have. However, there's some instances where they're just making items float, like they're grabbing it with their hands. But guess what? I don't know if you know this, goldfish don't have hands. We see Gilbert in the talent show making the mic float all around him. Brooks opening a jar. How? I don't know. And also, Extreme is using a slingshot to propel himself into the air. Hello, you're already in the air. And it's like, obviously, this is going against science. Like, obviously, gravity must be different or something in this commercial universe. No, you thought. In one of the commercials, season two, episode six, Extreme talks about Newton's third law of motion. Do you even think these stunts through? Actually, I applied Newton's third law of motion. It's your basic thrust equation. Now, I know, that's the law of motion, but that means that Newton exists. Therefore, that means that Newton made his laws of gravity. Therefore, we can infer that gravity in this world is the same as gravity in our world. All this hinges on Newton, so don't even question it. I'm right, you're wrong, moving on. So obviously, the first thought that I had was, was there a nuclear fallout in this universe? It wiped out the entire human race, but didn't affect animals at all. And also, it mutated goldfish crackers that existed in this world into sentient beings that could levitate things with their minds. Obviously, that's where my mind went. I don't know where yours would go. Because for the longest time, the only living things that we see in these commercials are the goldfish crackers and like dogs but i'm here to tell you right now forget the apocalypse theory it's debunked because in season six it's revealed that there are humans yeah it took them that long to reveal that there's actually humans in this world. <laughs> when I saw that first commercial from season six, my jaw dropped. I was like, <gasps> because I had been screaming the entire time. Where the fuck are the people? Do the animators just not want to animate people? I get it, but I mean, I'm over here theorizing that there's a goddamn apocalypse in this world. What do you think the kids are thinking? But I mean, the fact that there's humans alive just leaves me with more questions. Like, do the humans see the goldfish ever? I mean, these goldfish are out here fucking partying. They're having goddamn talent shows, they're having rock concerts, they're stealing your MP3 players, they're goddamn taking off in paper airplanes going around the house, even the family dog notices them. People, what are you doing? And the fact that humans do actually exist in this universe leads me to another big question. Do the goldfish want to be eaten. Hey, I'm stuck. Me too. We're all stuck. Excellent. Now I can eat you. Now I'm going to be using this comparison a lot in this video, which is comparing the Goldfish Crackers commercials to the Toy Story franchise. I probably should have used it a bit in the first big question, like how are the toys in Toy Story alive? But with this question, do goldfish want to be eaten? It's when you look at the toys in Toy Story, toys were made to be played with, and the toys in Toy Story, they want to be played with, and the goldfish in this world were made to be eaten. But do they? want to be eaten because if they want to be eaten then they would die and i'm just saying these goldfish are living and thriving underneath this bed like these goldfish i presume want to live and there's certain instances where we see that they don't want to be eaten like in the first episode where we meet bailey the dog brooks like Swim, 
when she sees the dog. Presumably because she doesn't want them to be eaten by the dog. Because you know dogs, they'll eat stuff off the floor. And then in a later episode in the go-kart season, I like to call it, Extreme Gilbert and Finn encounter a retainer that is then picked up by the human in their room, who is named Jamie. It's not that important, but I thought I'd say his name in order to get it out there. So Jamie picks the retainer up off the floor and puts it in his mouth. First off, fucking gross. Go and wash it, you heathen. But then we hear Extreme say, He just put it in his mouth! And those three look horrified. They don't want to be put in a human's mouth. Hmm, very interesting. But the real piece of evidence, which may be a controversial one, isn't with these commercials. It's with the commercials that came before the serialization of the Goldfish Cracker commercials. In these commercials, we see a goldfish who I presume is Finn, just in a more primitive form. He tells groups of goldfish that in order to not be eaten, they need to do what he says. To avoid being eaten, we need to use the buddy system. And these fucking dumbass goldfish do the exact opposite of what Finn says and make themselves even more delicious. And Finn's over here like, God damn it, guys. Do you want to die? Now, some other evidence that I found is that in one of the episodes in season five, we see that Finn can be tickled. Now, you may be wondering, Alec, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> well, it means that Finn can feel things, aka he can feel tickling sensations or he can feel pain. Hmm. So therefore, if a goldfish in this universe were, say, to be crushed by teeth, I think they'd be in pain. So I'm going to presume that all of these goldfish have heard the consumption of their family and friends, and they were all horrified and decided that they want to live. So they decided to hide away in places like underneath the bed, or underneath the couch cushions, or God forbid even the vacuum cleaner is safer than with those monsters. Because in some of the later commercials, we know that goldfish view humans as monsters. In season six, the season where Finn and friends go outdoors for the very first time, we see a little girl trample King Neptune's sand castle. King Neptune says, the giant's coming! And in season eight, the dream season, we see in Brooke's dream that another similar looking girl is seen as this huge hulking monster wreaking havoc over Washington, D.C. Now, yes, Abraham Lincoln is there, and he is normal size, but Brooke doesn't know what Abraham Lincoln looks like in real life. She only knows what this little girl looks like in real life, so she probably just assumes that Abraham Lincoln is her height. Because as we can see in this dream, Brooke calls for extreme measures, and funnily enough, they measure extreme, who they say is three centimeters tall. So, presumably, Brooke sees Lincoln as just a little bit taller than her. However, she knows that this girl is fucking huge. Huge. So it's safe to assume that goldfish in this commercial universe don't want to be eaten by humans because they see humans as monsters. Well, too fucking bad. <laughs> you see this? I'm eating your friends and family. Watch your friend be eaten by my dog. Go ahead, Cece. Eat him. Eat it, Cece. See him watch his friend. <laughs> What, you don't like goldfish puppy? You don't like them? I'll eat you guys. Don't worry about that. You're so pretty. She just got a haircut, and so did I. So I don't know, maybe dogs are nice to goldfish crackers. All right, moving on. Another big question I have is one that's very relevant with what's been going on lately in our own world. As we know, there are many different flavors of goldfish crackers. They all come in different shapes. Well, not really shapes. They all come in different sizes and flavors just like all of us. So that leads me to the question, is there prejudice between the different flavors of goldfish? AKA, is there racism? How's it going? I'm Finn. Hey, Finn. Uh... Well, what kind of name is that, Irish? No, Cheddar. We learn pretty quickly that Brooke, Gilbert, Finn, and Extreme are all from different places in the house, which I take it as them seeing it as, like, different countries. So Finn's from the bag on the nightstand, Brooke's from a snack bowl, and Extreme is from the pantry. However, when Gilbert says pantry, he kind of says it in a weird way. Here, take a listen. How about that guy? Ha <laughs> ha! 
Pantry. Pantry. Like, uh, he's from the pantry. You know how they are in the pantry. There's some other small instances that I would say are a little bit weird. Like when Brooke says this about Extreme for the very first time. Who is this guy again? Extreme. He's flavor blasted. <laughs> Why'd you gotta say it like that, Brooke? Hmm? Why'd you put a little bit of stank on it? You don't like flavor blasted goldfish? It's not cool, Brooke. It's not cool. And then also when Gilbert goes tanning, he asks Finn this. Does this make me look flavor blasted? Why do you want to look like another flavor, Gilbert? I'm just saying, Gilbert. Kinda racist. And then Swimmington's entire first appearance just screams, spoiled little rich kid. First off, he calls them natives. Hello, natives. Friendly, I hope. And also he says this about pretzels. I've got more nuts than a pretzel. No offense. No offense? Uh, yeah, that's the catchphrase of a racist. Now, I want to stick with Swimmington a little bit more, because not only is his, like, whole character, like, privileged white boy, but when they talk about the place that they came from, the pantry, it sounds like a dictatorship. All the goldfish in the pantry have to stay in line and they are not allowed to do anything out of line. They have to fit within a certain mold. But Extreme doesn't want to fit that mold and he's looked down on because of it. So then when he finally goes to live under the bed, he says this. So that's why I wanted to break out, find some new places. Now I have friends who accept me for who I am. Who accept him for who he is. Now if that isn't the words of a guy who was able to escape from a racist dictatorship, I don't know what is. One of my biggest hangups with Swimmington on this issue is not even him talking about another goldfish's flavor. In the episode after the dictatorship episode, <laughs> I mean, that's the best synopsis I have for the episode, so we're moving on. Swimmington is seen with a random goldfish who has a broken tail. Now, is this goldfish seen as injured? Would he be seen as the same in our world as a person with only one leg? I don't know. I don't know. But the thing is, Swimmington uses this fish like a coin. He says heads or tails, and then he flips the fish that only has one tail fin. Bro, what the fuck? Heads or tails, or should I say... Heads and half a tail. <laughs> Just the worst. Everybody, we're canceling Swimmington. Hashtag cancel Swimmington. He's a fucking racist, ableist piece of shit. Who even makes fun of his brother? His own flesh and blood. Well, I guess not flesh and blood. I guess like cracker and, <laughs> and dust <laughs> because they're flavor blasted. My brother's so cute when he's sleeping. Do not tell him I said that. And speaking of Swimmington and Extreme being brothers, that brings me to probably the dumbest question. I have, but still a valid one. How are new goldfish made? AKA, do they fuck? I know action, you two kiss! Uh. Say what? So to start off this very delicate topic, Swimmington and Extreme are brothers. We all can agree on that. But where are their parents? And how did that work? Now you may be thinking, obviously goldfish don't know about sex. Wrong. In part one of Finn's dream in the dream season, Brooke talks about the mating call of a pig. What's that? That's the mating call of a wild pig. So they know that mating is a thing. So they know that sex is a thing. So therefore, I ask you, where are Swimmington and Extreme's parents and did they have sex? Hmm? I'm asking! Now, if you're thinking this is the dumbest shit I ever heard, I agree. But get ready, because I'm about to bring the stupid meter up a little bit. I think we can all agree that one of the first steps to sex is nudity. <laughs> Is nudity even a concept in the goldfish world? Because I don't know if you can tell, but all of the goldfish are naked. None of them are wearing clothes, some of them wear glasses, sometimes they're wearing bow ties, but they're never wearing, like, Pants. They're just letting it fly. <laughs> and there are some explicit mentions of nudity. In one of the commercials, the goldfish are seen exercising. And at one point, they go to the radiator, which in this world is used like the sauna at a gym. And when Brooke enters the radiator, Gilbert is taken aback and asks, Since when did the radiator go cold? What are you trying to say there, Gilbert? Is Brooke over there naked? Are you two naked too? You guys are wearing towels more than what you usually wear. So, what's going on? And then in the first 
instance where we see the vacuum introduced. Gilbert's salt particles are whisked off his body, and he then asks, Anyone else feel a draft? Which in most cartoons is only asked when people are down to their birthday suits. Good grief, he's naked! And to top it all off, in one episode, Finn tells Gilbert before a big performance that he's about to make, I've heard that if you imagine the audience in their underpants, it makes the scary go away. And I'm over here like, what? Underwear! None of you have ever worn underwear! But then a giant hamster comes and destroys the stage, and then he imagines the hamster wearing underwear, and it's just like, ha ha ha, very funny, but also, like, they know the term underwear, which is on underneath clothes. So when people are down to their underwear, they're practically naked. Therefore, they know about nudity. Therefore, there is sex. Now, I probably should have put this part before the nudity conversation, but also, yes, goldfish can be attracted to each other. We see that with the red goldfish. She kisses Gilbert, and she's all like, Bring Gilbert home! So obviously, there like can be romantic relationships in the goldfish universe now does brooke get with anybody no i bet you all were just like yeah brooke fucking gets with finn or something nope I watch every single commercial, there's never an instance of Brooke liking one of the other four, or any of the other four liking Brooke. So I'm just saying, my OTP is Brooke and Extreme. They would be cute together. But do they ever kiss? No. Come on. You two are the hottest of the group. I'm just saying. Make some Parmesan flavor blasted babies. <laughs> hey, there's baby goldfish. Wait a minute. Holy shit, I just uncovered something. There are baby goldfish crackers out there in the world. So, I think I just broke this entire question wide open. Extreme and Swillington are brothers. There's baby goldfish. Uh, yeah. Goldfish fuck. <laughs> Now let's circle back for a second and look at these questions that I've posed so far in this video. Do the goldfish crackers do the nasty? Yes. Is there prejudice between different flavors of goldfish crackers? Also yes. Do the goldfish want to be eaten? No. However, we still haven't asked the question, how are these goldfish alive? At first I thought it might be a nuclear fallout deal. That's not it. The outside looks pristine. The people are still alive, albeit it did it take them a long time for them to show up. So the apocalypse theory out the window. So I got to thinking, how could these goldfish be alive? Well, it was a complete mystery to me. I had no clue what it could have been until. Now stay with me on this. This theory may be the dumbest one I've come up with in this video. However, you did just listen to me talk about how I figured that goldfish crackers have sex in this universe. So you're with me on this until the end. <laughs> so I was watching the last commercial to have aired on television so far. In this latest season, it's all about them promoting their movie maker app. So in each commercial, Finn is directing a movie that each of the characters are in. And in the last one, they're seen in a haunted house, which is actually just like a doll house. And that got me thinking. The goldfish are walking around a doll house, kind of like they're toys. And then, bing! A light bulb went off above my head. Toys being alive, like in Toy Story. We look at Forky from Toy Story 4, and he was an inanimate object until he was seen as a toy by Bonnie. Before he was just a regular spork, but now he is Forky the living breathing toy. Now what if Jamie plays with the goldfish like they're toys, thus making them live and breathe? So you may be wondering, well, Alec, that can't be happening because then we would see Jamie playing with the goldfish. Because whenever the kids in Toy Story are playing with the toys, we see them, their hands grabbing the toys, playing with them, you know? Oh yeah? I'm sorry, is somebody forgetting the beginning of Toy Story 3? Where it's this big epic moment inside of Andy's mind because that's what he sees in his mind. Where the toys are talking themselves and there's nobody controlling them. So what if the reason why Jamie isn't there for the first like five seasons is because he's actually playing with the goldfish and this is how he sees their world, a sprawl metropolis underneath his bed. Now you may be wondering, what about the times that we saw Jamie? Uh, all the times that we saw Jamie, it was either for a brief second while Finn was under the bed, not doing anything, like a toy would be, or it's while Jamie is asleep. So therefore, I pose to you, why do we not know that this instance of Finn and friends moving around is not Jamie dreaming? It's all making sense to me. Well, that does it. This theory is air.
tight. The Goldfish commercials are connected to the Toy Story franchise. Case closed. Thank you and good night. Is the internet used for anything besides cat videos? No, not really. But hey, if you have any theories about the Goldfish Cracker universe or any memories you have of the Goldfish Cracker commercials, leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to read them. Not that they'd be as airtight as my theories, am I right? And hey, while you're down there, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And hey, you should find me on social media and also listen to my podcast on YouTube or any podcast streaming service that you use. And now for the remainder of this video, I'm going to tell you some facts about the Goldfish Cracker commercials that I couldn't put in the main part of this silly dumb video while also eating and ranking the goldfish cracker flavors that I have in the background of the shot right now. Alright, so did you know that the first three seasons of the goldfish cracker commercials were animated by a production company known as Framestore? And they've done like a lot of work on a bunch of different things like Spider-Man No Way Home, Don't Look Up, and a bunch of other stuff. Basic Cheddar. I mean, these are the goldfish that I ate growing up, you know? These are like an A, at least. Like, they're just good. The Cheddar Jalapeno Megabytes Goldfish. But it's interesting because, like, the Search for Gilbert pilot was animated by the old animation studio, Frame Store. But then, like, the first official episode was animated by, like, a different production company. I was the most excited for these. They're kind of underwhelming. I give it like a high C. Parmesan. So what I can gather is that the most recent seasons from season four onward are animated by a studio known as Blur Studio. I really shouldn't have filmed this part after eating dinner. The Parmesan's kind of plain. I can't really taste much Parmesan. They kind of just taste like cracker. I can feel like a little bit of a kick after chewing for a little bit, but they, that's like too little too late. D tier. Flavor blasted extra cheddar. Uh, I should not have waited this long to do this bit. My tummy's like, no, don't do it. I have to. It's for the content. Pain is temporary. Content is forever. So Blur Studio. They're most well known for spearheading that Netflix show Love, Death, and Robots, which is pretty cool. I love that show. Those are good. Those are better than the cheddar ones. I'd give that a higher A, like it's top tier. I don't know if it's S tier yet, because I need to eat the others, but that one's pretty high up. I might put it into S tier in a second. Original goldfish. I thought cheddar was the original, so I guess these are just plain ass crackers. <laughs> but Blur Studios also worked on other movies like Deadpool and the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, as well as make a bunch of different video game commercials. Like look them up. They're very talented there at Blur. Yep, those are crackers for all right. I mean, it's just oyster crackers, but like in the shape of goldfish. This is like the basicest a goldfish cracker can get. I'd give it a C, but I put it above the Parmesan. The Parmesan was a disappointment. These are just what you would expect. Goldfish Graham S'mores. Now real quick, I do want to say I don't have any pretzel goldfish. It's not because I don't like Gilbert. It's literally because I couldn't find any pretzel goldfish at any of my local supermarkets. But I'm sure I would have given it a terrible rating because Gilbert sucks. He's not that bad. I don't know why I keep saying that. Look, it even says on the back, try goldfish pretzel. I would if I could. Okay, that's pretty good. I can taste the chocolate and the gram, and the marshmallow tastes like Lucky Charms marshmallows. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. I'd give that like a low A. If you're looking for a sweet little treat, these will do you good. Flavor Blasted Extra Cheesy Pizza. Now, I wanted to talk more about the voice actors in the video of the goldfish, but there is like no sources on who the hell the voice actors are. The only one I know for a fact it is, is the voice actress for Coral. Because I was like, I know this voice. This sounds like Phil and Lil from Rugrats. So the voice actress for Coral is Kath Susie. I think there's a voice actor listed online on who Finn is voiced by, but I'm not totally sure if that's correct. Anyway, let's try these. I've never been a fan of pizza flavored anything, like pizza flavored combos, and this isn't an exception. I mean, it tastes like pizza crust. I don't know, I'd give this like either a low C or a high D. I'm leaning towards high D, but above Parmesan. Flavor blasted cheddar and sour cream. By the way, there's a bunch of apps made for goldfish. There's goldfish go-karts, there's goldfish movie maker, which is like you can make your own little animated scenes with the goldfish characters, and it's silly. There's also like goldfish pinball and those are like fine. 
that definitely tastes like sour cream. I was never a big fan of sour cream anything. If you like sour cream flavored stuff, you'll probably like these. I'm not a fan of sour cream. I'll put this like in high C tier, but others will probably like it better than I do. And the last one I have, Megabytes Sharp Cheddar. So by taking this different approach for video, I didn't get to talk about a lot of things that I would have talked about if this was like a regular like commentary video. So like I never got to talk about IQ, like the graham cracker goldfish that's stuck in the vacuum. I don't know, I just wanted to mention him. I didn't want all the IQ fans to be left out. Also, they have Dwayne Wade in one of the goldfish commercials. What the fuck? I mean, these are pretty much just big cheddar goldfish with a little bit more flavor to it, I guess, because it's sharp cheddar. Anyway, these ones are A tier above the cheddar ones, and I'm gonna put the flavor blasted extra cheddar ones in S tier. And that's pretty much it, so bye-bye.